Continuing our reading in The World and Thorin by Damon Knight, chapter 14, section 4, which will be the end of the novel. As the box had foretold, the first engine took Thorin to another, a metal egg with stout walls and thick windows. When the door was shut, water spurted into the chamber around them and filled it. Then they went out into a darkness broken only by their own lights. Thorin saw schools of little fish like flashing coins, and once something larger that hung for a moment at the edge of the darkness. At length they came out into the air again. The door opened, and the engine's arms grasped him and handed him through like a sack of wheat into the belly of another engine. This one was like the engine that had captured him before. They went through another doorway. The windows were instantly obscured by a thick white cloud and remained so for the rest of their journey upward. In this engine, things had weight again. Thorin felt himself growing heavier and heavier as the days passed. On the fourth day, shortly after he awoke, there was a change. He felt the engine turning in the air. Looking back through the windows, he saw the cloud they had just emerged from. It came out of a great hole in the plain, rose in a gigantic column, and spread out under the sky like a tree of cloud. Under it was bog land, gray and swampy with incessant rains, but when they had got beyond it, the sky was bright. They traveled high in the air all that day, and just before nightfall, Thorin saw ahead a wall of towering mountains that rose, rose from the plain like a fortress. First there was a sloping cliff, thousands of elves high, then a broad green plain cut by rivers and dotted by lakes, then the true mountains, which he had seen only in his dreams. Night skied overhead as they approached the highlands, and the mountain peaks passed below, green and mysterious in the sky glow. Here and there, High in the valleys folded into the mountains, Thorin could make out the lights of clustered houses, but at length these went out and they drifted onward over a sleepy landscape. Feverish with impatience, Thorin hopped back and forth in the belly of the engine, trying to get used to his unaccustomed weight. He had been so long away that his limbs were heavy, and even his leather garments felt as if they were made of lead. The engine came to rest on a high ridge overlooking a town. The door opened. Thorin hopped out and turned. The door closed silently. The engine rose into the darkness and was gone. Thorin stood and waited for dawn. All around him, in the breathing night, in the earth under his feet, he felt how wide the world was. It was not at all like the safe small world he had known in Hovenskar, and indeed, if he told anyone all that he now knew, who would believe him? An eye of brightness opened in the eastern sky and swept fanwise toward him. The land brightened. The trees turned from gloom to green. Birds began to sing in the branches. Distant and dreamlike as the underworld and all its perils seemed to him now. In a curious fashion, Hovenskar seemed even more remote. Once he had mentioned and mediated violence, tricking Goriat and his sons to the well curb, then toppling them in. And now that seemed no longer to matter. Let them live or die as it pleased them. Down below he could see the peaked roofs of the town, the threads of smoke rising from chimney pots. Presently the gates opened and he saw a procession with banners winding toward him up the defile. After all, there were parts of his adventure that no sensible person could believe. To imagine that this great globe could be only a moat in some unthinkable cavern, for instance, that could not be true. But then, what was true? Thorin tilted his head to look at the bright canopy of the sky. Were there other caverns up there? Or was there a shell of stone that went on forever, as the wingman believed? One day, perhaps, he would go and see. And that is the end of The World and Thorin by Damon Knight, first published in the 1960s.